We continue to see this play out of the theme, right, where they can, you know, keep turning on the, the, the credit taps, but the demand just doesn't seem to be there. Right, exactly. Uh, mortgages, for example, the proxy for mortgages fell almost 90% in October from September. So if people aren't uh, borrowing to buy homes, we're not going to see home sales pick up, which is obviously then the key problem that's been with the China property sector the past year plus. That's what's been driving down uh, dollar bond prices of property developers. And it's just this virtuous cycle that's just been going on. And these loan numbers really continue to show that the Chinese economy is really, really struggling. And you have an update for us when it comes to the China credit tracker. Right. Uh, offshore bonds remained at the highest stress level in October. Uh, dollar bonds lost 12 percent uh, last month. It's the second biggest loss ever for, on a monthly basis in a Bloomberg index tracking the high yield sector. Investment grade bonds are also weak. It also had its worst or the second worst uh, month in October. It lost 3 percent. So this does appear to be there's some bit of contagion going on. Now, certainly, we've been talking the last few weeks about perpetual bonds of Asian banks um, after the Korean uh, insurer decided not to initially call back a bond that investors were expecting it to repurchase. So there's been these various issues in the bond market and the credit market more broadly that just seem to be spreading. And it's not just the Chinese property developers any longer, it seems. Kevin, there's, I think, a tendency in this market at the moment to think that the exit out of COVID zero is going to solve everything. It's not, though, is it? Because we're going to come out of this with China uh, debt to GDP, for example, local government finances mm -hmm. are going to be in a mess, and it wouldn't completely fix the, the systemic issues with the property market. Right. Uh, like I said earlier, we need home sales to really start picking up for Insure, or for builders, excuse me, to really get that cash flow going to be able to start servicing their debt. And we have these local government financing vehicles. They themselves are also debt laden. Um, there's concerns as far as things like tax revenue, whether they will ultimately be able to service their debt. So there's a number of different debt issues going on, largely still focused on the property sector. But like you said, with COVID, if these COVID lockdowns continue and we have data like today with Beijing cases at the highest level in a year, how are the opportunities going to be for, for uh, home buyers to be able to feel confident enough to go purchase a home? How are the builders going to be able to have enough cash flow to be able to finish the homes? Those are some of the key questions.